so uh talking about poisson distribution so poisson distribution is a uniparametric distribution okay you remember when we did binomial distribution binomial distribution was biparametric distribution there are two parameters were there n and p when it comes to poisson distribution poisson distribution is the limiting case of binomial distribution where uh, we are considering that the number of trials will be infinite means considering a large number of trials infinite there is nothing called infinite in mathematics infinite here means that those things which you cannot measure so when it comes to poisson distribution we are talking about an event where the number of trials are is not finite okay here the number of trials are infinite means so number of trials are very large and the probability of getting its success is very less okay so that is what pro, uh, poisson distribution is there so where the poisson distribution probability formula is e to the power minus lambda into lambda to the power r by r factorial so this is the probability in the case of poisson distribution in case of poisson distribution your mean and variance are same okay and then they are equal to n into p they are equal to n into p okay so we are, we assume that uh, that product of n into p is is finite where this mean i am representing with lambda in some textbook they use uh, m also you can use lambda or you can use m that's up to you that is none of my business so e to the power minus m into m to the power r by r factorial here i don't know how many of you know what is e e is the euler number it's a irrational number like p uh, like not p sorry it's a irrational number like pi so where uh, basically uh, if you have studied time value of money uh, there you studied about uh, compound interest and all right so if your rate of interest changes every second so the, the general formula of compound interest was this 1 plus r by 100 to the power t right so this is the general formula of compound interest, right? This is the this is the general formula of compound interest that future value is equal to present value into one plus r percent to the power time. Okay, if your rate of interest changes every second, I hope you know about uh, semi semi annual compounding and all. Then r percent by two by two to the power two. If it quarterly r percent by four to the power forty like that, so imagine if the rate of interest is every second, so then it would be r percent by three sixty five. Okay, one year has into twenty four. One year have three sixty five days. One day have twenty four hour, and one hour has three six zero zero second, and one hour has three six zero zero second to the power three sixty five into twenty four into three six zero zero t so this complicated logic is basically done in the form of exponential these things are called exponential okay, and this is written like this way so here what is e i don't know how much you have understood what i tried to just now did this is called continuous compounding. So basically when we are expecting the rate of change and if the rate of change is exponential, like, like you, you remember how Corona was spreading. So it was not spreading what you say, compounding from one person to per, from one, it was spreading to two from two. It was spreading to four from four. It's spreading to 16 like that. So it was not like from four, it will spread to 16 people. It can be infinite people. So that kind of change is called exponential. So uh, here, this is what we study here. Here, E E basically called a Euler number. There's a mathematician called Leonard Euler. To give credit to that mathematician, we use this notation called E. You have studied about E in log also. Uh, log, okay, we have not done much about E and all. Anyway, so uh, here the value of E, what you would remember is, it's an irrational number. 2.71828 like this. You have to remember this value. 
So in Excel, basically, if you want to do E, we basically do EXP. So it's like, it's an irrational number. Okay, so I hope you, you know what is rational, irrational and all. So this is like 2.71828. Please remember this. Okay. And how to find to the power and all. I, I believe you know, right? With normal calculator, how can you do the power and all? So you can go to YouTube and search. You'll get many videos on how to find log by using simple calculator. So with your simple calculator, you can even find log values. So there are series of steps are there. Okay. Some for that, I need to show you what you say. If you want me to teach, then I have to basically, uh, I need a simple calculator and I need a camera or something so that I can show you step by step. Otherwise, you can get the video on YouTube, learn those things. Okay, how to find power and and, and expone log values. So those things will be helpful. If you've done time value of money, then you should know these things. Okay, so please remember this is E value. So what is one by E? What is one by E? This also if possible, you can memorize and all. So one by E would be nothing but one by this value. 0.3678 like that. So point three six seven eight seven nine point three six seven eight seven nine yeah so okay how then what is e to the power minus two how will you do this you studied the indices and all what is e to the power minus two if you have to do so this would be nothing but this is one by this is one by this is 1 by e to the power 2 so 1 by 0.367879 and please do not get confused for any values like this you should know this these two please memorize if possible if i ask you e to the power minus 4 so you should know what what is 1 by e 0.367879 to the power 4 Point three six seven eight seven nine to the power two. Clear? This is point three six seven eight seven nine to the power two. Understood, right? Should I tell you again this thing? You know indices and all. No? You have to remember these two values, right? Are we good to go? Everyone, yeah, please tell me. Nisarg, Sagar, Santosh, Sinchana. Please tell me, did you understand this? Huh. Because this has, these are a little bit confusing. Yeah, because problem is that scientific calculator is not allowed in the exam. If scientific calculator is allowed, then there's no problem. So with how will you do the normal calculation with without scientific calculator? That is the concern. Okay. If so, like if you see this question number nine. If the standard deviation of a Poisson variate is 2. Okay. So Poisson distribution is there. We have done till question number 8 so far in the last classes. Should we remember all these value? Varsha, if possible, you have to remember minimum. You have to remember this Varsha that the E value. This so you have to remember at any cost. If you don't, if you remember this, you can find this. Correct now. If you remember these two, then easy for you. If you know these two, then you can find any E value. Because scientific calculator is not allowed in the exam. And normally for MBA or MCOM students, when we teach the same thing for them, so we give them binomial table, Poisson table to them in the exam. So I'm not very sure that will you get these tables for you people. So I'm 
So that's the reason why I'm telling you that it's better if you can remember these things. Now, uh, I told you that for the Poisson distribution, your mean and variance is equal to n into p. And, and your standard deviation would be root of n into p. So in set B, if you see this question number 9, if the standard deviation is 2, if your standard deviation is 2, then your variance and your mean will be equal to 4. I hope this part is clear with all of you. Question number 9. Okay, so what they're asking you, you have to find the probability that your P lies between, your P lies between 1.5. It is greater than 1.5 but less than 2.9. So guys, please understand here your probability and all we cannot work on decimals. So your P cannot be uh, decimal values. Okay, your P's are all like what is the probability we are finding for X values. So X will be finite. We cannot work on decimals. So here 1.5 greater than 1.5 and less than 2.9. What is the integer value that is 2? So what is the probability that your x is 2? If you use the formula e to the power minus lambda into lambda to the power r by r factorial. So here your, your r is 2. And what is your mean? Mean is 4. So e to the power minus 4 into uh, 4 to the power 2 by 2 factorial. So what is e to the power minus 4? Already I told you. Already I told you that e to the power minus 1 is point e to the power minus 1 is 0. 0.367879. So this is 0. 0.367879. So e to the power minus 4 will be just do the to the power 4 of this 0. 0.367879. This value to the power 4. That would be 0. 0.0183. So 0 0.0183 ah uh, 16 16 into 4 square is 16 na? by 2 so 2 factorial this is 8 sir. just multiply with 8 0 0.1465 0 0.1465 this is your answer Let me just check. Is there any option? Oh, question number 9.14. Option D. 6525. Yeah, so close option they are giving. 1465. Then answer should be option C then. Ninth. The so close option they are giving. Ninth. What is the answer? Option D, they're telling. And here we are getting, if you go, then 0.1465 is more closer to 0.15, right? This is more closer to 0.15. Your actual answer is this. If I use in Excel, what, what uh, E, X, P, to the power minus 4 into 8, right? Into 8. If I do, you're getting 0. 0.146525. So this is actually more closer to 0. 0.15. But in book, they have, they assume this is more closer to 0. 0.14. So this is their mistake. The person who set the questions, they should not give. So either they then better, they should give this as option. Anyway, do you understand this? Then question number 10, mean is given 1. Yeah, question number 10, your mean is given as 1. Question number 10, question number 10, your mean is given as 1. Okay, your mean is given as 1. What is 
the probability that it take at least one means they are asking you probability that x is at least one so please understand this is nothing but probability of zero simple so probability of zero means one minus one minus probability of zero means what is the formula e to the power e to the power minus lambda right e to the power minus lambda and your mean is one so e to the power minus one into one to the power zero by zero factorial this is what they're asking you so one minus e to the power minus one one to the power zero is one and zero factor is one so one minus e to the power minus one is how much point we have done now point point three six seven eight seven nine this is point three six three six seven eight seven nine just solve this that is your answer point six three two one point six three two one two one You understand at least one, at least one means one, two, three, four, till whatever infinite. So better one minus probability of zero. So we have done so far two questions. Question number nine. Question number 10, any doubts, Santosh, Varsha, Sinchana, Nisarg, Sagar, please ask me. Let's do one more question before we end the class. Question number 11. Question number 11 that uh, it follow Poisa distribution and coefficient of variant variation is 50. Coefficient of variation is 50 means they are giving you in percentage. What is the formula of this? Standard deviation by mean into 100. And so, so what is standard deviation? That is root of n into p. Standard deviation. And what is mean n into p? This is 50 by 100. Can I write 1 by 2? I hope you guys are getting it. 50 by 100, 1 by 2. So this will be 1 by root p n p is 1 by 2. Okay, so it means root of NP is equal to 2. It means NP is equal to mean is equal to 4. Clear now? So, what is the probability that X would assume only non-zero values? Again, the same thing, guys. Again, the same thing. So x assume only non-zero value means x is greater than or equal to 1. 1 minus probability of x less than 1 means. Less than 1 means what? There is only one value. So this is 1 minus e to the power minus lambda into lambda to the power r by r factorial. So this is 1 minus, 1 minus e to the power minus 4 into 4 to the power 0 by 0 factorial. So this is 1 minus e to the power minus 4. Simple. 1 minus, what is e to the power minus 1? 0 0.367574. 0 0.367879. 0 0.36. 0 0.367879 to the power 2. Solve this. This is your answer. Point nine eight one six eight four. Point nine eight one six whatever eight four. Check your option. Eleven. 
0.9898 option B. And this was six three two one two one. Tenth one tenth one no? six three option C. Tenth one is option C, eleventh one is option B. Correct, right? Check. So this much guys from the today class uh, will continue discussion in next class. If you have any doubt, please ask me. Otherwise you are free to leave the class.